Is anyone else getting announcement fatigue? There are so many upcoming features in Microsoft 365 that I'm starting to forget what exactly the tools do right now and what I'm waiting on for future Nick to benefit from. And now we've got another. Less than two weeks after Microsoft's last announcement event focused on AI and Surface, we get another focused on AI and storage. And it was a good one. It was interesting, but that doesn't mitigate this feeling of just wanting this pace of announcements to slow down just a little. Why AI and file storage? Well, your files and other data are really at the heart of Microsoft's ability to differentiate itself in the AI market. The context that it gains access to through all the data it holds in Microsoft 365 is really the special source that allows its top tier AI products like Microsoft 365 Copilot to be worth $30 a month. And it's the reason why I think in the business focused AI powered productivity space, there can only really be two players, Microsoft and Google. Not because they necessarily have the best AI tech, but because they are the only ones capable of having an inbuilt broad context of what you do at work. If you didn't catch the event, there were certainly a few interesting announcements that were all framed by Microsoft as the 3.0 version release of OneDrive. This includes some new presentational aspects of how OneDrive works on the web, but also more substantive changes like new file contexts, such as by meetings, new sharing capabilities, new admin capabilities for control over overshared data, and most interesting, new integrations into Windows itself. But before we dive into those, I think it's important to consider a little context about why it's vital that we continue to see this type of innovation in products like OneDrive. Thanks for watching. Please remember to hit the like button so we can share this video with the largest number of interested people possible. And if you want to see more like this, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you know as soon as I release another video. Also, if there are people in your wider network who would appreciate content like this, please do consider sharing it there too. Thanks. For many of the small businesses I work with, and for many big businesses too, age-old paradigms of file management have been slow to die in the cloud era. Despite delivering a just search first approach to how files should work in the cloud and surfacing new ways of thinking about them, like the context of files recently used by people you work with, for many businesses, cloud-based file storage looks much like a company file server did back in 2003. But as we move from apps with self-contained and predictable file types like Microsoft Word to services like Loop, this old way of thinking about the where of your data starts to break down really quickly. At the same time, the push of AI forces a company like Microsoft to find ways to understand your data to a degree it never has before. With the release of semantic indexing for Microsoft Graph data, and even data shared by third-party services by Graph Connectors, there is an amazing amplification of contextual understanding, not only for products like Microsoft 365 Copilot, but for plain old Microsoft Search too. In the past, by accessing a service like Delve, you could dig into the things people around you were working on, and many users actually found this pretty creepy. But now, using similar signals, it's possible to present information in a much more relevant way, where you as the user aren't having to think so hard about the specific context that's driving that data to be surfaced to you. But despite these advances, Microsoft still has a file problem. OneDrive has offered a solution in the cloud and has slowly and with differing levels of success been better integrated into Explorer in desktop windows. But have you tried searching for files in Windows 11 instead of using your neatly indexed cloud-based search bar in OneDrive or Teams? It's an entirely different and much less useful experience, which in many ways doesn't seem to have advanced since the days of Windows 98, let alone XP or Windows 7. So that brings us to why we are still having discussions about the future of file management. Because after literal decades of attempts, it's a problem that refuses to disappear. 
Just yesterday, I had trouble finding a file on a Windows PC that was of a file type I had to open in a non-Microsoft app locally. And in the end, the only recourse I had was to step through an old-fashioned folder-based file system in Explorer and treat my data like an old-style filing cabinet by just sorting by modified date. Doing this, I found a file that Windows Search told me wasn't there. So file management is definitely still a live topic and definitely still something that needs improvement. So with that background established, just how important are the announcements Microsoft has made about OneDrive? And what will OneDrive 3.0 bring us? It only took around three and a half minutes for Jeff Tieper from Microsoft to mention AI in his presentation by my count, which was actually about three minutes longer than I'd predicted. But while AI was represented here, this wasn't an AI-focused set of updates, which is somewhat of a refreshing change. One of the most interesting facts that was given for context is that SharePoint and OneDrive get about 2 billion extra files added to them every day. That's billion with a B. This gives some perspective of how big these products are and the volumes of data Microsoft is dealing with in its online products. OneDrive seems to be constantly getting presentational updates. And for me, the imagery of what was shared in the announcement today doesn't really look that different to what I think I've been using for a while. Drop me a comment below if I'm missing something. But two big changes affecting the UI did stand out for me. The first is that we now get additional contextual file access options in OneDrive. We can view files by meetings, which is incredibly useful, and I think aligns more with how those of us who go to a lot of meetings think about a lot of the content we have access to. So much of my time is consumed with preparing for meetings, attending meetings, and then following up within the context of the information that was shared in that meeting. Being able to shortcut this in OneDrive is really powerful. However, I do think they have missed a trick right now on this feature, as while you can see Teams recordings in the context of this meeting pane, you cannot see intelligent recaps if you're a Teams Premium subscriber, and so this isn't truly bringing together all the content associated with that meeting in one place, at least not yet. A people view is also welcome, but I already highlighted in this video how some people found Delve creepy, and this does something that's pretty similar. The fact that it bridges the gap between your tenant and other tenants is also welcome, as I certainly spend a lot of my time collaborating with people in other organisations. Interestingly, right now, the people view does not service meeting content associated with that person, so it's not directly possible to be able to remember the person and stitch that back to a particular recording or file associated with a particular meeting, but maybe that's something that will come in the future. These new views are also coming to Teams, with the new OneDrive capabilities becoming a OneDrive app that's going to replace the Files app there, as well as becoming an app accessible from the new Outlook client as well. This makes a lot of sense to me, as the more we can pull into Teams so you can get things done there, the better. I just wish we could get feature parity in the Teams and Outlook calendars, and then I would rarely need to switch between the two apps. The change in files in Teams will come in December, as will the addition of the app to Outlook. Another new feature that we're expected to see in December is the ability to open non-Microsoft app file types directly from the OneDrive web interface, such as an image file to edit or a CAD drawing. This is so useful and completely resolves the example I gave of an issue I had with Explorer just yesterday, as you can now open those non-Microsoft file types and it even allows you to save those files and automatically update what's saved in OneDrive using its sync technology. That, in my opinion, is next level useful in this fight of not creating hundreds of copies of the same file unintentionally. I just can't wait for this, as I'm unlikely to need to leave OneDrive very often if this works well. But speaking of leaving OneDrive, for me, the most exciting aspect of this set of announcements was the better integration we're going to start to see between OneDrive and Windows Explorer. This is the elephant in the room when it comes to Windows file management and this update seems to be doing a lot to address it. First, you're going to be able to continue to use the web interface of OneDrive offline, and in the same way that you can now sync files to Windows and use them offline, you'll be able to select offline files directly from the web interface. 
Similarly, we're going to start to see parts of the OneDrive web UI fitted into your files view in Windows Explorer. Bringing these two file management products together, in my opinion, is one of the most important announcements Microsoft has made and helps us to understand the path between Windows and the web that will ultimately allow a seamless experience whatever you're doing, including using those new Copilot experiences we're starting to see. Of course, Copilot is coming to OneDrive. Or more accurately, OneDrive is coming to Microsoft 365 Copilot. So unlike products like Power Apps or Power Automate, if you want to see AI Copilot features in your files experience in OneDrive or SharePoint, you must be a subscriber to that paid Microsoft 365 Copilot add-on. But don't expect to see OneDrive's Copilot features November 1st when Microsoft 365 Copilot rolls out. You're going to have to wait until December. Features such as searching with natural language in OneDrive doesn't seem to be entirely new versus what we've already seen promised by Copilot. And I'm surprised that they won't be there November 1st, to be honest, as the assumption on my part had been that those Microsoft Search powered boxes that appear across the ecosystem would just start doing cool new things as soon as Copilot was turned on, as we've seen demoed in various other apps. However, OneDrive will get some interesting capabilities you won't necessarily see elsewhere. For example, you'll be able to use the context of the results of your file search as the basis for other AI experiences, such as using them in Copilot chat, and even be able to group together common files discovered using natural language in a folder and share from there. I think this is an interesting use of Copilot, though I imagine this has more to do with the power of the Microsoft Graph and its new semantic index than it does with the generative capabilities of GPT-4. Another AI experience that was mentioned was for consumer OneDrive, that is adding people search in photos based on face recognition and photo search using natural language. It's interesting that these were not mentioned in the context of a consumer co-pilot that was hinted at two weeks ago at Microsoft's last event. So at this point, we have no idea what licenses will be needed to see this feature when it arrives. Those consumer features are not to be confused with a new media view that is coming to Business OneDrive and will allow you to organize all your media into one place. The consumer photo features will be coming early 2024 in preview and the business media view will be coming in the summer of 2024. There were also a bunch of admin centric announcements offering new options on how to restrict the sharing of files and to understand better how users are collaborating. The one I found most interesting here was a new capability to move OneDrive accounts across tenants without breaking any of the existing sharing links. For companies going through mergers or divestitures, this will be welcome. Overall, I think this was an interesting, although very diverse set of announcements. It is certainly clear that Microsoft is continuing to elevate OneDrive as the default place to deal with files, whether you're using Windows or any other type of device. This is really important as file management continues to be something that is difficult to grapple with. Features like offline sync from the web and opening desktop apps for non-Microsoft files and then save back to OneDrive are vital in making OneDrive truly work for its broadest purpose. Despite early on in the presentation highlighting how OneDrive should be your home for new types of experiences like lists or loop, nothing was specifically said to provide clarity on how these service-centric rather than file-centric data types will be handled in the future. Microsoft needs to address this as it keeps adding services that hold data in unusual and often undocumented ways and admins are not clear on what actions might break things. We've heard for example that forms data is going to appear in lists but those lists themselves are not readily accessible in the same way files are under OneDrive. Hopefully, we don't need to wait for OneDrive 4.0 to address these issues. The other issue that doesn't ever seem to get addressed is how content, even if it's shared, remains tied to the user, not just if it's specifically shared in OneDrive, but when it's pushed into other services like Teams Chat, for example. By making it really easy for anyone to find that shared file and work on it wherever it lives is great. But it's also dangerous if files that end up getting new lives for collaborative purposes continue to live only in the context of one user's OneDrive. 
OneDrive data often disappears with the user, say they leave the company, but also users may unintentionally remove access that is needed for another user's purpose. I think this is an issue that AI could easily address by intelligently suggesting a change of context for where files are stored, but only if those capabilities are built. In my mind, this is one of the big failings created by the ease of sharing content from OneDrive. So that was a bit of a whirlwind. I'm truly excited to see these new integrations OneDrive will have in Windows, in Teams, and in Outlook. This will help people to keep their content organized and reduce the proliferation of unintentional duplication of files. There's still work to do, but what has been announced are solid steps in the iterative improvement of an already very strong product, and I appreciate the direction this is moving in. What do you think? Are you excited about these announcements? What features are you looking forward to most? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.